Amen. 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 I uh, want to bring greetings from the North East Church of Christ in Oklahoma City. I pray without him. Um, I've been asked to come and share with you um, some things with regard to the theme generosity. Brother Wilson and I were visiting, and he told me that from time to time, you take some time to talk about giving. And so, really, that's just a, a good diplomatic word. But say, I'm going to talk about giving. But the idea of generosity frames an attitude that I want to talk to you about tonight. All right? I know that's not Sunday morning. You know, Sunday morning, we start off with a, with a high and all of that. It's Monday night, so you all look like Monday night. Uh, just kind of, uh, and it's raining, and, and uh, my flight was delayed in Chicago because they said y'all had wind and stuff in, in, in New York. It's interesting, hey, what I got on the plane, and the pilot said, uh, I, we apologize for the hour or so delay. Um, and I know they said that there was a lot of weather in New York. He said, it's not really bad weather to New Yorkers. It's just some wind and it's rain. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, isn't it interesting how the weather people, I guess the job security, they can make, when you listen to them on the television, they make it sound like everybody's getting blown away. <laughs> uh, so when you all hear about the terrible things in Oklahoma City, it really ain't that bad. <laughs> uh, but I'm glad to be here, and uh, I'm going to spend, I'm just going to be looking through Wednesday night, and we're going to be talking about generosity. Let me share with you where I'd like to begin. Uh, again, generosity is an attitude, so I want to talk a little bit about your attitude. I know that uh, you all like stories, or at least I, I, I'm trying to make myself think you like stories. Some of that's because I like telling stories, and so here's a story tonight. And as I've gotten older, um, one of the things I like to try to create is, is an atmosphere that's a little bit informal, okay? I want you to sense, and you can't do this, you can't move the chair, but I want you to have a kind of uh, uh, climate that says, just kind of gather around, okay? And I'm going to tell you a story. Is that all right? Yeah. Let's kind of pull up a seat. And I'm going to try to tell the story in such a way that, you know, um, I know you paid for the whole seat, but I just want you to use the edge of it. Just kind of, just kind of set it the edge of your seat. Um, and what I want to try to do, this is an old familiar story. I'm going to read it. You've heard it. You've heard it preach. Um, and what we want to try to do is to wrestle from familiarity. We say that again, okay? Um, we want to wrestle truth from familiarity. When something is very familiar, you just say, oh, I've heard that before. Right? And I, you know, I, I know about everything there is to know about that story. And, 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 and so you just kind of go to sleep while somebody's not, not really there. Uh, you're, you're kind of mundane while it's being told. But what I want us to do is ring out some truth that will help us frame what we're going to talk about as it relates to generosity. The story is found in the 12th chapter of the Gospel according to Luke. Luke chapter 12. All y'all got Bibles? Luke chapter 12. I'm going to read this. The story began at verse 16. And so from 16 to 20, we have this story. I'm reading this story from uh, the New King James Version of the Bible. It says, Then he spoke a parable to them, saying, Certain, the ground of a certain rich man yielded plentifully. He thought within himself, saying, What shall I do since I have no room to store?
restore my crops. So he said, I will do this. I will pull down my barns, build greater. There I will store all my crops, my goods. I'll save my soul. You know you talk to your soul. I will save my soul. Soul, you have many goods laid up for many years. Take your ease. Eat, drink, be merry. Verse 20. But God said to him, Fool, this night your soul will be required of you. Then who will those things be which you have provided? I believe Jesus has some theology here that is very, very practical that he tells in this parable. But I want you, before we take a, a look at the parable, to appreciate what precipitated the parable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the story that starts in verse 16 is framed, as it were, like two bookends. If you go back to uh, verse 13, you'll find that verse 13 gives a little bit of the context. So if you have your Bible and you'd like to just make some notes, verse 13 introduces that which precipitated him telling the story. And, and after, he, after you look at what precipitated the story, the first book in is a proverb. Everybody say proverb. The word proverb means a powerful saying, a wise saying that you ought to take note of. So verse 13 gives a little bit of the context Verse 14 and 15, particularly 15, is a proverb. So if you, were, if you were writing an outline, just look at 13 and 14 as the introduction. Verse 15 as a proverb. And then you have the story from 16 through 20. And then it closes at 21 with a second proverb. So, so what you have is a story framed by two proverbs. Yeah. And really, I know you know the story. The story is an old story. You got the story. What I want to spend a little bit of time with you is in those bookends that frame the story. Is that all right? Now, in order to get the context before we get to the wisdom saying, look at what happens in verse 13. The Bible says, Then one from the crowd said to him, Teacher, yeah. tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. Yeah. Here is an unidentified Aquarius in the audience. You can imagine Jesus. There are those that are following him. He was a great teacher. And so uh, they weren't in a building like this. They were, uh, as it were, almost like a parade. And, and they are following the master. There is somebody in the audience, and we don't know his name, but he's obviously frustrated. Something has upset him. And, and he cries out uh, 